Hey there, Royal Watchers. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. Alrighty now, folks, grab your tea and crumpets, because your favorite neighbor critic is back with some piping hot tea that's about to scold the self-proclaimed Duchess of Delusion herself. That's right, folks. We're diving deep into the latest royal kerfuffle, and oh boy, is it a doozy. So now, our dear Meghan Markle, the evil mastermind spotlight-hungry rotten Z-lister herself, is apparently refusing to let go of her greed and PR victim game. And get this, she's doing it despite her favorite royal lapdog puppet Prince Harry begging her to stop. I mean, can you believe the audacity, the sheer unbridled nerve of this woman? Let's break this down, shall we? According to royal expert Tom Quinn, and don't we just love a bit of expert tea? Meghan is holding her ground in the ongoing tensions with the royal family. Now, hold on to your fascinators, folks, because this is where it gets really rich. Meghan, in her infinite wisdom and humility, and I use those terms very, very loosely, is demanding a formal apology from the royal family, but not just any apology of no. She wants King Charles and Prince William to kneel down and apologize if they want Harry back. I'm sorry, I think I just choked on my Earl Grey. Is she for real? Does she think she's starring in some sort of royal version of Game of Thrones? New slash Meghan, this isn't Hollywood and you're certainly no Khaleesi. But wait, it gets better. Our dear brainwashed Harry, bless his ginger heart, is apparently supporting Meghan's stance but is eager to bridge the gap. Well, isn't that just precious? It's like watching a puppy trying to pease both its owner and the postman at the same time. Spoiler alert, Harry, it's not going to work. Now, I can just imagine the scene in a Montecito mansion when this little tiff went down. Picture it. Harry, probably midway through his daily routine of staring wistfully at old photos of London, is suddenly startled by Megan's shrill voice. Harry, she cries, I've got it. We'll demand that your father and brother grovel at our feet. That'll show them. And poor Harry, caught between a rock and a hard place, or shall I say, between his wife and his family, probably just nodded along. After all, that's been his job for the past few years, hasn't it? To agree with whatever scheme Megan's cooked up next. But deep down, you just know he's thinking, Crikey, what have I gotten myself into? But let's take a moment to appreciate the delicious irony of this situation. Megan, who once claimed she didn't know much about the royal family before marrying into it, now thinks she has the right to demand apologies from the King of England and the future King. It's like watching a first-year drama student trying to rewrite Shakespeare, amusing but ultimately pathetic. And can we talk about the audacity for a second, the sheer unbridled nerve of this woman? She walks away from the royal family, airs all their dirty laundry on Oprah, makes a Netflix documentary that's essentially a six-hour-long complaint, and then has the gall to demand an apology. Oh, honey. Oh, sweetie. Oh, you poor, deluded little duchess. Let me break it down for you, Megan, since you seem to be having trouble grasping reality. You're not a royal anymore. You're not even a working royal. You're a former actress living in California, trying desperately to cling to a title you claim not to care about. Your demands for apologies aren't just unrealistic. They're downright laughable. But you know what? Part of me almost feels sorry for Megan. Almost. Because this is the bed she made, isn't it? She chose to walk away from a life of privilege and duty, thinking she could have her cake and eat it too. She thought she could leverage her royal connections to become some sort of global influencer, a mixture of Princess Diana and Oprah Winfrey. Instead, she's become a cautionary tale, a reminder of what happens when you bite the hand that feeds you when you mistake notoriety for fame, when you prioritize your own ego over the institution you're meant to serve. And let's not forget, this is the same woman who claimed she wanted privacy. Remember that, folks? When she and Harry first left the royal family, it was all about escaping the public eye, protecting their children from the media glare. And now, now she's practically begging for attention, demanding apologies and groveling from the most senior members of the royal family. It's almost like, and bear with me here, it's almost like she never wanted privacy at all. Shocking, I know. But here's the thing that really gets me. While Megan is off playing make-believe and trying to relive her glory days as a Z-list actress, there are real royals doing real work. Let's talk about Kate for a moment, shall we? Now there's a woman who understands what it means to be royal. Kate didn't come from aristocracy. She wasn't born into this life. But from the moment she stepped into the royal spotlight, she's carried herself with grace, dignity, and an unwavering commitment to service. She doesn't need to demand apologies or make documentaries about how hard her life is. She's too busy, you know, actually working. And William, oh, our dear William, can you imagine him kneeling down to apologize to Meghan? Of course not, because he understands that being a royal is about more than just himself. 
It's about the institution, about the country, about something bigger than any one person's ego. But I digress. Let's get back to our one egg queen, shall we? Because I'm sure Megan's not done yet. Oh no, this is just the beginning. I can practically see the wheels turning in that PR-obsessed brain of hers. What's next on the agenda? A demand for her own crown? A request to rename Buckingham Palace after her? Or maybe, and I wouldn't put this past her. She'll try to start her own rival monarchy in California. Queen Macon of Montecito, anyone? Wherever it is, you can bet it'll be calculated, choreographed, and about as authentic as a British accent. Because that's Macon's modus operandi, isn't it? Everything's a performance, every move a carefully planned step in her grand chess game of public opinion. But here's the thing, Macon dear, the public isn't as gullible as you seem to think. We've seen behind the curtain now. We've caught a glimpse of the real Meghan Markle, and let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. It's a picture of a woman so desperate for fame and adulation that she's willing to throw anyone and everyone under the bus, even her own husband's family. It's the image of someone so obsessed with being in the spotlight that she's lost touch with reality. It's the portrait of a person who's so busy playing the victim that she's forgotten how to be a human being. And you know what? It's sad, it really is. Because underneath all the drama and the scandals and the PR stunts, there's a person there. A person who, somewhere along the line, lost her way. A person who forgot that true happiness doesn't come from magazine covers or Netflix deals or royal titles. It comes from authenticity, from integrity, from being true to yourself and to those around you. But instead of embracing that truth, Megan's chosen to double down on the delusion. She's chosen to keep spinning her web of half-truths and manipulations, hoping against hope that if she just demands loudly enough, she'll get what she wants. Well, I've got news for you, Megan. The jig is up. The Emperor has no clothes. The Duchess has no leverage. Whatever metaphor you want to use, the result is the same. The royal family has woken up to who you really are. And honey, they're not impressed. So what's next for our beleaguered Duchess? Well, if I were a betting man, and let's face it, in this business, we're all taking bets. I'd say we're in for more of the same. More victim narratives, more carefully staged photo ops, more exclusive interviews where Megan gets to control the questions and the answers. But here's the thing, it's not going to work anymore. The world has seen behind the curtain, and we're not interested in watching the same old show. We're tired of the drama, the tears, the constant need for attention. We're ready for something real, something authentic, something royal. And that, my friends, is why Kate and William, Charles and Camilla, and all the working royals will always come out on top. Because they understand what real royalty is about. It's not about fame or fortune or having your face on the cover of magazines. It's about service, about duty, about putting the needs of others before your own. It's about showing up day after day, rain or shine, to support the causes and the people who need it most. It's about representing your country with dignity and grace, even when you're faced with criticism or challenges. It's about understanding that the crown isn't a right or a privilege, it's a responsibility. And that's something Meghan never understood. She saw the royal family as a stepping stone, a way to increase her fame and her fortune. She thought she could waltz in, change everything to suit her needs, and then waltz out again when things got tough. Well, surprise, surprise, that's not how it works. Being royal isn't about wearing fancy dresses and attending glamorous events, but I'm sure that's nice too. It's about early mornings and late nights, about shaking hands and making small talk, about remembering names and faces and showing people that you care. It's about being a symbol of something greater than yourself, about carrying the weight of history and tradition on your shoulders. And let's be honest, Meghan was never cut out for that. She wanted the Tyra without the responsibility, the title without the duty. And when she realized she couldn't have one without the other, she threw a tantrum that would make a toddler blush. But you know what? In a way, we should be thanking Meghan, because her actions have only served to highlight how truly remarkable our real royals are. Her drama has made us appreciate the quiet dignity of the Queen even more. Her attention-seeking has made us value Kate's grace and poise all the more highly. Her selfishness has made us realize just how selfless and dedicated the working royals truly are. So, in a weird way, Megan's done us all a favor. She's reminded us of what true royalty looks like by showing us everything it's not. She's made us appreciate the real thing all the more by giving us such a poor imitation. And as for her demands for an apology, well, as one commentator so brilliantly put it, it's pure Hollywood fantasy. The idea that King Charles and Queen Camilla would grovel at Megan's feet is about as likely as me being crowned the next monarch. It's a delusion so grand, so spectacularly out of touch with reality, that it would be laughable if it weren't so sad. 
Because here's the thing, people are tired of Megan's act. They're tired of the constant victimhood, the never-ending drama, the relentless self-promotion. They want substance, not spectacle. They want royals they can look up to, not celebrities they've grown to distrust. And that's the crux of Megan's problem, isn't it? She's become unrelatable. She's so far removed from the lives of ordinary people that she can't even see how ridiculous her demands are, expecting the King of England to apologize to her. Please, there are people out there struggling to make ends meet and Meghan's worried about whether she's getting enough groveling from the royals. But Meghan doesn't see it that way. In her mind, she's still the star. She's still the main attraction. She still believes that the world revolves around her and her desires. And that, my friends, is why she'll never be truly accepted as a royal again. Because royalty, for all its pomp and circumstance, is about more than just the individual. It's about tradition, about duty, about service. It's about being part of something greater than yourself. And Megan, she's never been able to see beyond her own reflection. So here we are watching the slow, painful decline of a woman who once had it all. A woman who had the world at her feet, who could have used her platform for genuine good, who could have been a force for positive change. Instead, she chose ego over duty, self-interest over service, and fleeting fame over lasting legacy. And now? Now she's left with nothing but her delusions and her desperate attempts to cling to relevance. It's a cautionary tale, really. A modern-day fable about the dangers of hubris, the perils of believing your own hype. But let's end on a positive note, shall we? Because while Megan's star may be fading, there are plenty of other lights shining brightly in the royal firmament. Kate, with her unwavering commitment to her causes and her role as future queen. William, steadily preparing to take on the mantle of kingship. Charles, finally stepping into the role he was born for, with Camilla loyally by his side. These are the royals we should be focusing on. These are the people who understand what it means to serve, to put duty before self, to represent something greater than their own desires. They're not perfect, no one is, but they're trying. They're showing up day after day, doing the work without complaint or drama. And that, my friends, is what true royalty looks like. It's not about demanding apologies or making headlines with outrageous claims. It's about consistency, about reliability, about being there for your people through good times and bad. So to Megan, I say this, it's time to wake up and smell the English breakfast tea, darling. Your dreams of royal stardom are over. Your attempts to manipulate the media have backfired. Your demands for apologies are falling on deaf ears. It's time to grow up, to face reality, to accept that you made your choices and now you have to live with the consequences. It's time to stop playing the victim and start taking responsibility for your actions. And to my dear viewers, I say this, don't be fooled by the glitter and the glamour. Don't be swayed by sob stories and carefully crafted narratives. Look at actions, not words. Judge people by what they do, not what they say they'll do. Remember, in a world full of make-ends, be a Kate. Be gracious, be kind, be dedicated to something bigger than yourself. Because at the end of the day, that's what real royalty is all about. And with that, my friends, I'll leave you to ponder these words of wisdom. But before I go, let me remind you, if you've enjoyed this little chat, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Because in this crazy world of royal drama, you won't want to miss a single update. Every like, every subscribe is a stand against the hypocrisy we've been witnessing. It's a voice raised in support of true royalty, of genuine service, of real integrity. Together, we can cut through the PR spin and get to the heart of what's really happening in the royal family. Your support means the world to me. It's what keeps me fighting to bring you the unvarnished truth about our beloved royals. Don't let the voice of reason be drowned out by the noise of scandal. Subscribe now and let's stand strong together. Remember, my royal watchers, you're not just viewers, you're my companions on this wild journey through the drama of the monarchy. So stay tuned, stay informed, and most importantly, stay royal. Until next time, this is your favorite negative critic signing off.